the Honorable Chief Justice and the Honorable Members of the Court. My name is Jotham Aroa. I appear for the seventh respondent, Commissioner Justice Nyangaya. I will be making submissions on the following issues. Issue number two, whether there was interference with the uploading and transmission of Form 34As. I'll also speak to the issue whether there were irregularities and whether the irregularities affected the results. I'll mention briefly something to do with the reliefs that this court ought to make. And also issue number six, whether IBC carried out the verification exercise. So on the first issue, my lady and the honorable members of the court, the position of my client is that there were indeed interference with the uploading and transmission of Form 34As. My client maintains that this was done without the involvement of the commissioners, specifically the four commissioners. And it is their position, my lady and the honorable members, that it was done in clear violation of Article 81E of the Constitution and Article 86. Uh, before I proceed, I wish to clarify that we have made reference to a number of authorities in our written submissions, but I will not refer to them because of time constraints. As regards interference with the ICT infrastructure, uh, the Commissioner in his affidavit, which has been filed before this court, and specifically in paragraphs 33 to 34, raises a number of issues. First, he maintains, my lady and the honorable members, that the server was accessed by unauthorized persons, and these included foreigners and some members of the IEBC. He mentions them by name. He further maintains that one foreigner by the name Gudino Omar accessed the server several times. He explains that a number of forms were pulled down and others uploaded. And he also maintains that there was revision of Form 34Bs. My lady and the honorable members, these allegations are contained in his affidavit. And I wish to point out that they have been responded to by IEBC. In their response, the first thing I wish, to point out, I wish to point out is that there is no denial that the logs that he annexed to his affidavit emanated from IEBC. The only contention being raised is how did he get them? That contention in our humble submission has no merit, considering, as he puts in his affidavit, that he was the commissioner in charge of ICT at the commission. If a commissioner who is in charge of ICT cannot access that kind of information, it is my submission that nobody else in IBC, IEBC can access them. The next thing that, and, and, and that admission, Madam Chief Justice and the Honorable Members, is found in the affidavit of Hilda Kavonga. 
That affidavit is filed by the firm of Iseme Kamau and Maema Advocates and is sworn on 27th of August 2022. And the admission is contained in paragraph 13, Roman 4. Beyond that, Madam Chief Justice and the Honorable Members, there is also an admission. And this, according to me, is a serious admission. There is an admission that the server was accessed by a foreigner by the name Gudino Omar, as mentioned in the affidavit of Justice Nyangaya. But I wish to read to the court what is said as concerns this foreigner. At page 5, paragraph 13, 7 of her affidavit, that is Hilda Kavonga, she says, Gudino Omar is the technical lead for Smartmatic, who provides support on the technical Ulani za kota sijua, lengo la kota lijua tu Ulani za kota sijua, lengo la kota lijua tu Kwa taka kunya mba kenya we, kutu kenya we, kutu waribie wa Alufu ya kota ijua, ata ukipanda ndege Alufu ya kota ijua tu is enjoined under Article 81E to uphold the secrecy of the vote. How secret can the vote be if it is being constantly accessed by a foreigner from a distant location? What is the guarantee that this foreigner will not grant further access to other unauthorized persons? to commit all manner of mischiefs. But more important, Madam Chief Justice and the Honorable Members, is the complaint by Justice Nyangaya that Gudino Omar was uploading and downloading forms. There is silence with regards to that issue. Then there was the contention that other unauthorized IEBC staff also had access to the server. And their names were provided, Madam Chief Justice and the 100 members. In the replying affidavit by Hilda Kavonga, again they make this admission, and with respect to one Abdidahir Maalim, It is argued, and I'm referring the court to paragraph 13, Roman 6 of Hilda's affidavit. She says, Abdidahir Malim was a returning officer, and his access was limited to transmitting from 34 Bs and not to any other function. Madam Chief Justice and the Honorable Members, the list of all the returning officers, the list of all returning officers who participated are included in the affidavit of Juliana Cherera and specifically marked as an XJJC2. Unfortunately, 
The name of Abdidahir Mohammed does not appear. It is not indicated with respect to which constituency or which county he was the returning officer. It would appear clearly that there was a lie. Beyond that, the logs that were submit filed by Justice Nyangaya were also analyzed by a forensic analyst, George Njoroge. And he submitted an affidavit to which he annexed a report. And in that report, Madam Chief Justice and the Honorable Members, it is clarified that Abdidahir Mohammed accessed the server more than a thousand times. The question one would ask is, why would he access the server so many times? What was he doing? Madam Chief Justice and the other members, it is quite clear that the server was defied. The next issue I would wish to speak to, and I can see I'm having serious time issues, is whether the IBC verified the results. And it is my submissions that that did not happen. And I'm saying so for two reasons. First, and this is important because it's not been captured by my colleagues, according to the Constitution, it is not only verification by IEBC that is required. Verification is supposed to happen at two levels. First, by IEBC, but secondly, by Kenyans. That's why both Article 86 and Article 81E institutionalize transparency. IEBC should make sure that every processes that they are undertaking are laid bare for the public to see, so that the public can also follow the processes and undertake their own verification. For reasons that have already been explained, it is clear that this verification by the public was not possible due to the opacity that has been referred to by my learned colleague, Apollo Mboya. But then there is the issue of verification by IEBC, which also did not happen and could not happen given the circumstances of this matter. Madam Chief Justice and Honorable Members, you have been told how four IEBC commissioners were sidelined in the entire process. It is our submissions that it could not have been the intention of Kenyans that IEBC commissioners be reduced to spectators in a presidential contest. That is something which is inconceivable. And we would humbly urge this court to put a stop to this practice. There are other issues that I would have wished to deal with, but because of time, allow me to cede the floor to my colleague, Jeremy. Thank you very much.